Righty then, welcome back to XG Files. Steve's here, Dre's here. How's it going? I'm all right, how are you? Where's Ronnie? I'm all right. Where the fuck is Ronnie? I don't know, the comments going to be fuming at you. Query? Um, he's having a day off. Fair. I didn't know we give days off here. In fact, Will, he's just trying to sneak out of the room now. He's got two weeks off. Is he? Where yeah, are you going, Will? He's, he's going crazy. Oh, yeah. For two weeks? Yeah. Sweet. All inclusive? Yeah. Oh, it is all inclusive. Oh, well, oh. A lot of ice cream. Um, and booze. And booze. The, I'm going to talk to you about that in a minute before we get sidetracked. But um, <laughs> if it all goes to ratchet the next two weeks, that's why. Right. Um, okay. Because Will's left us for two weeks. Keep an eye, guys. Because of, I don't know, this thing's called employment law. And things. <laughs> right, you've got to have holidays and that. Uh, anyway, so we were just talking. I said, Joe, you know what? Save this because I think this is an interesting topic for people. Um, there's all sorts going on with um, my little pub team <laughs> next season. Yeah. And uh, we're back at a stadium. And uh, I like, I loved having the programs. Uh, I've got them framed on my wall. You lot, when you're watching the videos, probably can only just see the edge of them because they face the opposite way. But I've got like a three programs mounted in, in a long frame, which was the first three programs from the only three games that we had at the stadium um, in our first season, which is why I have all three of them framed. We're back there next season. It didn't really feel right having programs um, playing at Nichols this year. It's been yeah, a horrible exactly. venue, but it is what it is. It served a purpose. Um, it's part of the journey, isn't it? But we're back at the stadium, and I'm just saying to Dre, I'm going to put special token number two in the first program. Absolute yeah. glossed over. Didn't have a clue what I was talking about, which is really showing my age. I'm I thought he meant like money off the next ticket. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's free entry, pound so off, pound I off might do five pound game. off entry for free entry and just see what <laughs> everyone says. But um, special tokens for the, um, like the likes of Notch are going, I know exactly what that is, and probably four or five other people, that will be it. Everyone else is like, what are you on about? And like Dre mentioned, season tickets now are on phones. Yeah, exactly. I like the convenience of that. I do like the convenience of that. I really do. But what it used to be back in the day, applying for tickets, this is your pre-league match ticket book and pre-season ticket. Although I think season tickets were a thing. I didn't get mine until 1997. So from 1990 till 1997, me and my dad were members. And we'd get to virtually every home game, I would say. You'd miss out on the occasional City or Liverpool, but you'd get to virtually every home game, every game in Europe, you'd get them. And there was something called tokens, and you would get your tokens by cutting them out of the programme. You'd have to literally like go home and do like a scrapbook type thing yeah. where you'd have to like glue them in a thing. And so, so the tokens, right? Like, what games would they help you get? Do you know what I mean? Like, wh why were you collecting them? I don't know, and I'm sure someone in the because like I, I never really did away games. I did when I grew up, but my dad never did. He had kids, so he, he didn't really do a lot of away games. So we never really, I, de I never really had that experience yeah. of like constantly doing away games. It was the Old Trafford games. Cup finals, I know for a fact you had to do. And there's one particular, I'm pretty sure it was either for the semi or the final in 1994. I'm thinking it was for the semi against Oldham in 1994. And we went to either an A game or a reserve game at Old Trafford. And during your life, I mean, I would have been 10, nine, right. 10 or nine, right? And sometimes you just go to Old Trafford. It ain't like nowadays where I've got the entire fix list on my phone. I don't actually know if there's a game on or anything. And we get there. And we went up to where the away fans are now. That was L stand. Right. Uh, the away fans didn't used to be there. I don't even know where the away fans used to be, you know. Uh, my dad was telling me they used to just be, they, they, were, they were like uh, in the East stand. That's right. where they used to be. I think next to United Road. Well, that was United Road, wasn't it? Where no, the United Road's North stand. And then next East to stand, K stand, K -stand, K -stand. They? But So K stand's always been K stand though. So this is it. I think they might have moved them around a little bit. Right. And I know they've moved around recently at times. But when I try and think about where the hell was the away fans? Like in the very, very early 90s, I can't actually place them. Really? Um, have to look at footage. Yeah, so we went in anyway to where Elle is, which is where the away fans are now. That corner as you come over the bridge. We went into there and I could see United playing. Mm -hmm. And there's about 50 people in the stand. And we go in, and it's like a pound, two pounds, something like that. And I'm not even really paying attention. And the program is an A4 piece of paper with just the teams printed on it, right? You've seen them. You've yeah, seen where it comes out like that. And then I go to get walked in, and I literally get collared by my dad, who sends me back out of, of the turnstile through the open door. And we go back in again, and I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> you could only get one program, A4 sheet, 
every entry. You couldn't just, yeah. like lean over and go, give 20 of them, mate, there's 20 quid. No, you've got to go in. You've got to open the turnstile. You've got to actually physically go in. We go in for a second time and I'm like, Keep trying to go walking into. The, I'm going to football. This is what we do. It's crazy. This is what it? me and you do, mate. What are you doing? Yeah. Colors me again, and we go home. Did you not watch it? Do we fuck? You know what you, <laughs> do you There's ever... a game on. What are we doing? <laughs> Why are we going home now? We just bought nine tickets for a game. We're not watching. I was so you confused. Go, you go over with all these pieces of paper. You're yeah, like, and we've got all these programs. The they've got a special token on them. Yeah. So I don't know how frequent special tokens were because I said it's one of my earliest memories of going to United, um, and it's a. United A against Berry or United Reserves against like so they used to play in like the Lancashire Summer of a League. Is it like um they had some some clubs do it obviously I'm in the Midlands, they do it's like the Birmingham Birmingham Senior Cup. Yeah, it's like, it'll be that something sort of like that. Yeah, yeah. Is there a Manchester Senior Cup? Yes. Yeah. Got so you. it's them sorts like of that. leagues where you there's a lot of non league teams in um I mean they're um, about under twenty threes like, like today. But I'm yeah, guessing yeah, yeah. back then because it's like Barcelona every year playing like the Catalan Cup. And you, you you don't know any of the teams, like any <laughs> of the players. You don't know any of the teams or any of the players, but they win it every year. Yeah. And like they put it like on their website as one of the honours that they win. Um, so it's, it must have been similar to that. But like, it's like we're also saying as well, like obviously season ticket now, where's my season ticket? Well, anyway, it's on here. But like, it's, it's convenient. But it's just, it's not the same, is it? Even when you have well, a that's, card. That's a the card, thing with a token. It's your season ticket. And like, you can keep that forever and you can go, oh, I want to see my season ticket from the uh, 04, 05 season. You can get it out and you can look at it, you can see what the picture is. Just like a bit of But even that's weird to me that it's a card because it was, it was, a, it was a, a paper booklet. Yeah. And every ticket you tore out. So you had a, a little tear out booklet. That was my, that was what I remember as a season I ticket. I just about doors. remember that. But um, also on your phone, I literally, I've been queuing up a few times this season. I've literally had like two percent charge, and I'm like, "Shit, fucking, I better get in here." And like, you know, the queues this season have just been fucked. Sometimes you literally don't know when you get there, and you're just thinking, "I need to get in." Otherwise, what am I doing? Am I? I need to go over to the ticket office. Hey, mate, I've got a, I've got a ticket on his phone, but it's dead. <laughs> They're like, they probably just let you in. Modern problem. <laughs> <laughs> it just let you turns in. off as well. Like, if you double tap like the the screen lock button, if you double tap a couple of times, it says at the bottom there, cards can still be used. Really? But it's a QR code it has to scan. So I'm what thinking maybe it can use like your bank card, maybe, but I can't do it because my phone's not dead. In fact, it ain't know. far off. I'm on 7%. But it says like cards can still be used and stuff. So I don't know how the hell it does that. You know, you know, programs, like what were they initially like for? Because like a program what? in my, like, like a like match program, is it just so you can see who's playing? Is that like the original, the, maybe, the reason for But what? like, when do you have to print a program? I mean, we get ours, or oh, I think we order paddocks on a Tuesday. We get delivery of them on a Friday, um, and then they're ready for us on a Saturday. We don't do Saturday deliveries in this building, so we have to get ours on a Friday. So we have to finish it on a Monday. So it's usually Will that does it, or Ronaldo. We finished making the program on a Monday, and then it goes in. Now, I don't put a team sheet in. I have a squad on the back like United mm -hmm. does, because uh, I don't know what the team's going to be yeah. by Monday. Um, and I'm sure that was the same for United back in the day. And obviously, there's a very famous Sheffield Wednesday program following Munich where it's a blank team sheet, which is one of the most iconic images yeah, yeah, ever yeah. in Manchester United's history. Um, is that blank team sheet. going to play. But I, I guess for most of the 50s, 60s, 70s, and I would argue even into the 80s, your starting 11 didn't really change. It was only really Premier League year onwards that it actually did change regularly and the, the need for having the squad list rather than the the, the your 11 um, probably came into yeah. existence. But it's, still, it's it's club information, isn't it? I guess it's the opposition as well. If you're going to watch United v Bolton, you want to see who's playing for Bolton, don't you? Yeah. You want to know who, I don't who's I don't know last time I read a United programme. No. It, it, certainly at the ground. But do you know what I mean? Like a programme now, obviously, like if you're a kid, you get a poster. There's some, some like writing in there. Obviously, you see the squads. Everyone knows the squads now. Bit of advertising in there. But like, you don't need a program mm. now. Whereas like when pro there would have been a reason for a program back in the day. That's quite interesting. I don't know what it is. I'd yeah, quite like I mean, to research that. You've got to think, um, technologies that made you, there's a United app. Mm -hmm. Anything that you wanted to know about United is probably going to be in the app. Yeah. Uh, and obviously we're doing the same thing. We've got an app coming out, but I'd like a program, even though I don't read United. If I go watch another club, um, especially non-league, I want to know about them, and the best way to do that, like you just said, is 
is getting your program. Yeah. Um, Souvenirs, aren't they? Like, I went to the Euros final in the time, summer, yeah. um, and I just thought, I have to buy a program. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But it was like, it was like, <laughs> it was like 20 quid. Robbing Ridi- bastards. It's ridiculous. Like I bought twenty program quid. At, uh, I bought programs at like UFC events and stuff, and they're always like fifteen quid and stuff yeah. like that. And it, they're, they're a bit shit actually. Sh- I haven't opened it. I've not <laughs> opened it. It's just like you've got to just have it, haven't you? Well, the the whole you know token thing being in the program, someone must have complained because at some point they changed that and they, they actually made it the center of the ticket. And if you go and search like Manchester United ticket token. You can actually zoom in and see some of them tickets. These are early 90s. Like, these, these are probably just starting at the Premier League, 91, 92, 93 sort of time, where the centre of your ticket became your token. And you'd have to cut them out. Yeah, but again, that's another souvenir for a lot of people. If you only go a couple of games a year, you want to keep that. You don't have to cut it out and put it on a, a sticker sheet <laughs> and then send it off to some guy to start drawing all over it again. <laughs> can you imagine it's, like a dad getting his ticket out for his son? It's like, this is my first ever game. It's just a hole in the middle of it. <laughs> it's, like, it's nuts, what? isn't it? Like, yeah. <laughs> it's and, quite funny. And then nowadays... Good luck getting hold of a paper ticket. I mean, that's that's a rare thing no, nowadays. You never get them. And just away games. What what is a screenshot of my first season ticket? Exactly. Like if my, if my three year old gets a season ticket now, she's getting a barcode, isn't she? Like it's like you just screenshot it. <laughs> but yeah, it's again the Euros final. If you wanted, it was like an electronic ticket. If you wanted the ticket, they then had an app where you could buy like a souvenir ticket. So they'd set, they'd literally, so it's like, here's my match ticket. Wait, was that, was that actually your ticket? Was it not online? It's like, yeah, it was online. So what's that? It's That's like, my oh, I thought ticket. I'd buy it so I can pretend in the future that it was actually a ticket. It's stupid. I mean, I get it. It's a nice, like, moment, like, do you know what I mean? It's a nice thing to have, but it's just, it's just a bit weird, isn't it? It's not actually it's your ticket. Bit. It is a little bit, yeah. I don't know. Technology, eh? It's, it's, it's Changing. crazy Changing how fast it came in. Um, and I think COVID had a lot to do with with how they managed to transition into that sort of stuff real quick. But there was a massive noise with um, with people's season tickets. You know, my granddad's he's eighty in the summer. Him going to the match, he doesn't go to a match very often. You know, he's he's only got one leg, so walking for any sort of distance, he's got a false leg, but walking right. for any sort of distance fucking murders him. So he don't walk a lot. Um, certainly doesn't walk the sort of distance you need to walk around Old Trafford because any, any small walk around Old Trafford, you, know, you get on one side of the ground, go on to the other side of the ground. Yeah, too fucked. much for him. Getting up to the top deck of the deck of the Stretford and forget about it, he's not doing it. But I've seen some people, you know, the, you know, spoke to a couple of people who have got you know, older relatives and stuff like that. Some don't even have a phone capable of supporting, you know, tickets and, and that sort of stuff. So I've seen people um, print out credit card sized version of their QR code because all like your season ticket is is a QR code in it so people have printed out like a season card sized QR code laminated it chopped it up to be like credit card size and then gone there you go yeah. that's your ticket so now when they go to the match they're pulling it out of the wallet maybe you need to do that for when your phone dies maybe as a that's little a backup shout. It's a good print shout. it out and just have it on the back of your phone yeah that's just a great shout like uh, you get a sticker of it can't you stick it on the yeah back. I mean, you can order stickers for like two quid for, for anything yeah. now from, for custom stickers but then like do you know what I mean if you're spending like my, my season ticket's the cheapest one it's still over 500 quid it's like if you're spending 500 quid on a season ticket you expect to get a little card with a QR code on it don't you instead of it just getting an email it, with an it? attachment no, it wouldn't be hard for him to do it. And that's the madness is when it comes to Champions League games, <laughs> Europa League games, um, and whatever League it's going to fucking be next season, it's a different QR code that you get. You don't yeah. just get your thingy one. They're, like The Champions League ones are like navy blue, aren't they? So exactly. they're, they're a different thing. It's same with FA Cup, same with League Cup. So you then, so like when, when you add it to your wallet, when you open it up to get to your season ticket for the league games, like, yeah, you then have to minute. scroll through wait all of these tickets yeah, that you've been and, to. You know, you've got some bloke who's maybe suffering with dementia or something. He's in his late eighties, and and he's like, "There's my season ticket." You know, no, no, Keith, that's that's a league cup one. <laughs> you're like Keith, oh, that's, no, that's, a, that's, that's a Champions that's League flappy one. Flappy Bird, mate. Oh, fuck's sake, <laughs> you do it. <laughs> that's Instagram. You no, know, when you've been going to the match from when it was like three D or something like that, and I'm not yeah. talking about like three dimensional. I'm talking about currency. So yeah, like you know, my match ticket here, that's a Champions League one. That's my dad's one, and that's mine one. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, the thing is, they must do something for like people who aren't capable of using a phone. I'm sure they'll print something off for of someone. Imagine they didn't. Surely. I don't think they do. I think they'll leave it to you. I don't know. 
You walk up to Old Trafford and go, I've got an email. That's a good little business idea. Getting tickets, getting online tickets onto cards for people. Effort. I think yeah. United should just do it. Yeah. I absolutely think United should just do it. <sighs> anyway, do you want to talk about uh, assistant managers, coaches? Oh yeah, so staff? we've said we're going to talk about the backroom staff, haven't we? Yeah, we've spent how long? Don't see anything on QR about, codes on um, there. Yeah. QR codes and Steve McLaren looks a bit like a QR so, code. Steve McLaren supposedly been personally asked by Ten Hag to come in alongside uh, Van der Gaag. Why? I think if you if you if you're trying to if you're trying to be positive when you look at this, no, I, want way, to, I want to know okay, why. Well, just tell me why. I'll tell you. I'll tell you why I think it's happened and what Ten Hag's thinking is is he's going into Manchester United. Steve McLaren is someone he's worked closely with before. He's a very experienced coach. Obviously, he's had some ups and some downs. But he's worked at United in arguably the most successful period in the club's history as a number two. Makes sense. 23 years ago. You're right. And like I said, if you're trying to look at it positively, you'd say that. No, but Bobby Charlton was a hell of a midfielder, but uh, <laughs> not, sure, he's not sure he's got the legs to, uh, to do it next season. I at mean, some point, you have to say, that's enough, Bobby. I think a, a key bit of information is we don't know what his role is. We just know that he so he's is bringing Van der Gaag and Steve McLaren. In my head, they're both supposedly number two. Yeah. So someone's going to be number two, someone's going to be number three. Now, Mike Arm Phelan's wrestle role... to decide. In my understanding of Mike Phelan's role at Manchester United is a lot more to do with um, the commercial organisation because the commercial responsibilities... Basically... You have your assistant manager and you have your first team coaches and you have your manager. The manager obviously is going to be setting the curriculum, the tone, the tempo, the energy, um, asking for whatever sessions you, know, you want to do. I have a 16 week curriculum and then I work to those and uh, two sessions a week we do this. With Paddock. Yes. And then on a Friday, I might tweak it because this quite worked or I didn't get enough of this or there's something I saw or we tailor it towards the opposition. But that's my three sessions a week. So I think professional level, and it's, you know, it's, it's from speaking to some top-level coaches that they've done this, don't be reactive in your training. Have space to be reactive, but have a curriculum that you work to because you go into it more planned, you go into it more relaxed, and you know you'll get round to fixing this when you planned. You know, start at the start of the season, go, these are the things I want my team to know, and then we will work through these teams and do it methodically. So... We're in week two at the moment. Next week will be week three for us. The first session was playing out from the back. This week's session has been playing through the thirds. Next week's session is third man runs. And then it's going to be switching play. And you're looking at them at creating chances and then finishing chances. So it's methodically worked from the back. And then from there it goes to so transitions from losing the ball in the high end to, to defending all the way back. Yeah, and then yeah. it goes back up the pitch again, looking at some different stuff. If I'm planning a curriculum for the team, there's method to it. You don't want to jump from finishing to defending corners. And then from defending corners to pressing from the front. Like, where's the link? Where's the building on the foundation? Everything that you should do should be linked to your last lot of sessions. Now, professional level playing twice a week, there's going to be a lot of tactical preparation for your next opposition. But you would hope pre-season is progressive overload for the fitness and working towards, here's how you lot play like Ten Hag wants you to. Yeah. So you would hope that the guys that Ten Hag sets that, Van der Gaag runs that, and then he'll be supported by analysts, um, sports scientists, strength and conditioning coaches, goalkeeper coach, and anyone else that's kind of involved with the first team to facilitate those training sessions, including like masseurs and, and people like that. They will be responsible for the preparation of the players and, and, and making sure everyone is ready for everything that they need to do. A uh, club the size of Manchester United, what Mike Phelan took as many United training sessions as I did, or have. Really? <laughs> like, yeah, he doesn't take training. Yeah, but he has done before, hasn't he? I think in an emergency he might have done, but I don't think he took training. Well, I don't think he was anywhere near training. I think he was as close to training as Ed Woodward was as close to training. Well, what I want to know is, what, I mean, you've mentioned it before with, um, with Mike Phelan. You say like he does a bit of like a... His role is kind of like he, he's taking players to do like sponsorship stuff he's taking people to do media stuff that, think can't, about that can't be his only role and if so why, I think why, that's a huge role though why, why, the size of Manchester why is he United. in the dugout 
Now, you know. that's another thing. Now, I think there's more to this role. And I'm wondering, is Steve McLaren going to take over this role? It's a little bit ambassadorial. It's a little bit admin. It's a little bit support. It's kind of all of those sorts of things. It's whatever Ten Hag wants it to be, in all honesty. You know, he might ask him to compile reports. He might ask him. So he might have his assistant manager busy with planning and delivering training. And he might have someone like... Steve McLaren, compiling reports from the fitness people, from the physios, from all of that lot, and then going, he might sit down with his assistant manager and say, right, okay, Van der Gaag. Yeah, he might. Yo, how's this going? Are we hitting those metrics in training, blah, blah, blah? Are you happy with this? Yeah, what's up? that player doing? Okay, cool. Steve, what's the physio reports? What's this doing? What's that doing? Because as a manager, there's so many things. He's going to get pulled from pillar to post for interviews. You know, there's so many, like, we, you might watch a BT one and a Sky one in a week. You've got to realise he's doing that for Chinese TV, for Al Jazeera, for B in Sport, for NBC and ESPN. Mm -hmm. and he's doing it for all of these as yeah, well. Why is Mike Phelan doing that? Why isn't why just not? some media person doing it? Because I think there's more to it than that. I think there's being able to speak on behalf of the manager from a football point of view without having to mither the manager. So under Sir Alex... Mike Phelan knows the training capacity of the players and he knows the training schedule of the players and he's got enough authority to be able to tell someone to sit down when they're dem like MUTV or Cublo or whoever it is he's yeah. demanding time with a player. Mike Phelan can go, no. Hang on, who Phil Jones is injured. <laughs> Yeah. Tep Phil Jones. Exactly. But he'll also know like what players, like for example, Marcus Rashford. Do you want Marcus Rashford to do an interview right now? No. Exactly. He'll, he'll be able so to it's, be like, it's no, not, not a not media person the because they'll just get whoever they can get. Yeah, exactly. like Ronaldo's views. I'm with you. Now, obviously, Ronaldo's got some personal stuff going on in his life. You want someone as part of, and maybe him being in the dugout might not be the greatest of idea, but you don't know the personal relationship he's had with, suppose he's not even got one with Ralph, but like with Ollie. Ollie got on the phone and said, let's go and have some fun at United. Mm -hmm. So Ollie clearly wanted him there. So that yeah. makes sense. The, the Ralph one, not so much. But if his role is very much as part of like um, an admin facilitator and almost like a, a, a shit stopper for the team, because there's so much commercial demand on Manchester United. Someone that can... F read what? Fergie's book. He literally says, this is what Mike does. Yeah. So what, why, why wouldn't Mike just do that now? You know, because because I think I think if he's if he's had enough but, and he's got you know, he's got a fair bit of abuse, hasn't he lately? And true. If I mean, he goes, you know what, I don't need the money. He's, and, uh, McLaren at the minute is doing some sort of role at Derby, which is not coaching. He's see what I'm getting at. Exactly, I do see what you're getting at, and I don't know when he last coached. Wh who was he last manager of? I've got I, there was some notes, um, but. <laughs> There was notes apparently. <laughs> yeah, uh, there was some, there's some notes on um, on Slack, but um, I don't know. He's done he's done a lot of coaching. He's a very experienced. 2019 coach. Derby County. T oh, sorry, 2019 QPR after a year at Derby County. And is that when he kind of famously bottled it in the championship when they were top of the table for ages? I'm not sure actually. The thing is, he, he, he's been a number two and he's 34 percent is his win rate at the time. Not great. He's very experienced. He's also been at Wolfsburg. He's been at Twente with shocking um, record at Newcastle, twenty-two percent. Ten Hag. Oof. Well, they won the league. He won the league. He won the league. He won the Eredivisie with FC Twente. It's yeah, pretty good. he had a forty-six percent with Twente. He also won the treble, three leagues on the bounce. Uh, oh, his second time round, he had a sixty-three percent with Twente. The first time round, went to Wolfsburg at twenty-nine percent. He's been around the place. Yeah, he. I think um, on Romano's tweet, I'm pretty sure he did say. He's going to be part of Ten Hag's coaching staff. The thing is, coaching though, staff, backroom staff. There's some words that that mean totally different things. It's vague. Um, it's vague, and we will find out more, and we'll find out more when it actually starts happening. But I think Van der Gag's coming in as well. He's definitely going to be the number two, surely. I think he's the fella putting the cones out and running training. Yeah, exactly. Well, he's done it this season with him. He'll do it again. Um, he was number two at twenty. Um, under te under Steve McLaren. Yeah, that's what I mean. So so Ten Hag has worked under Steve McLaren as a manager. Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, it does. If he is doing a, a similar role to Mike Feeling as well, it does make sense. It, it almost gives Ten Hag just a bit of like comfort to go into somewhere. There's a guy who's been at this club. Okay, it was a long time ago. Not for twenty he's years. An exper yeah. He's experienced. You know, he's worked with him. He knows him. It does make sense to have someone like that around. 
And like you said, he might be doing some sort of upstairs role. The weird thing is, though, how many people now are getting linked to upstairs roles at Man United? You've Mate, got Fletcher, an extension upstairs. Murta, Mitchell, Ranjik, Phelan, uh, McLaren. I, <laughs> I, I, I haven't spoke to Mike, and on? out of respect, um, I haven't spoke to Rennie either. You know, oh there, there was a lot of linking yeah, to Rennie, and honestly, I, I might do a lap of town if Rennie gets <laughs> announced, but out of respect. And I also just don't want to be lied to, and I'm putting someone in a position where they might have to lie to me. Yeah. And I didn't want to, so I've just not He's bothered just, just asking. Leave. What's what does he do now? Rene. Yeah. Is the assistant manager at Australia. <laughs> well, they got a World Cup coming up. <laughs> but I think he'd drop it like it was hot if, it, if United yeah. came in. It's my opinion, obviously. I've not spoken to him about that. Um and the same, I've got Mike's number. I, I used to text Mike quite regularly, but with everything that's gone on and uh, all the rest of it, I've just gone Yeah, no, and that's that's respectful. Here's a question for you. If he is part of the coaching staff and he is involved. Who? Um, McLaren. Yeah. Do you worry about that he's not a modern manager? Uh, he's not a modern coach. He's not known to have a pressing, possession-based kind of new manager style of coaching. Does that worry you? Being a player, being a manager, being an assistant manager might not even be closely linked to being jobs. Like you being a great player doesn't mean fuck all. It's like playing a trumpet and thinking you can play guitar. It's not the same. It's totally different. Playing music might give you an advantage to understanding how to understand your, your notes, but playing a trumpet to playing a guitar is not the same. It's totally different, and it's not going to help you. Okay. And I think being a player, Steve wasn't a player, was he? Steve McLaren? I don't know. I don't think he was a player. Let's have a look. I might have been. Well, how old is he? I don't even know. I think my phone's going to die. Um, and there we go. Is it yeah, gone? It's gone. Let's have a look. Um, yeah, I, I don't know what the um, the playing career of him was. I don't think it was international level if it was even professional level. So whatever it was with Steve McLaren, I think Fergie mentions this in his book as well about how he was a, a fantastic number two, as good as any that he had. Yeah. But he wanted to manage. And he went and managed and... Uh, winning the league's nothing to sniff at, especially with FC20 in the Eredivis. Well done. You know, absolutely. 100%. But you know, failed at Wolfsburg, failed at Newcastle, failed at Derby, failed at Forest. It's a lot more fails than it was. Yeah, was he, it played, a he played 178 games for Hull City. Three, Where's Will when you need him? Three, <laughs> he's in Crete. <laughs> thinking about Steve McLaren. He will be by the time this comes <laughs> in out. In his Hull it? shirt. Um, uh, so okay, so he did have a career. I apologise, Steve. Um, thing is, he's going to bring in a few coaches, isn't he? So it, we we don't even know half of them yet. And that's the other thing as well is that whether or not McLaren managed to manage himself, if he's a good person to be around, and Sir Alex says he was, and Roy Keane says he was, like there's and, okay, it might have been twenty years ago, but if he's more of a hands off kind of just a guy to be around the place. From, from obviously you know, speaking to ex-players, listening to some of you, know, you listen to what Skull says, you listen to what Rio says, what Van Persie says, what Van Nistelrooy says, Keane in a big way says, there's a culture at a football club, and if a culture needs a bit of a reset, having people aligned with the correct message, a message that's going to be aligned to the manager because they're friends, clearly friends, if he's almost begged him to come, a guy that's got a little bit of shared history in Manchester United is a, a very successful. I don't think Steve McLaren's putting the cones out. I don't no. think Steve. Mc, I think Steve McLaren. Everyone at home, you've all been to a football training session. I think, right? Everyone surely has been to a football training session. There is a cartel of people usually on the sideline, having conversations. I'd, I'd be honest. It's one of my favourite parts of football sessions. Is I'll, I'll get my session underway. And then I'll have a bit of a social while the session's underway. And I can easily have a conversation like this, pause that, correct this, correct that, carry on, mm -hmm. what you're saying, and, and pick that conversation up. That's a nice setting to be in. If I have to take training on my own, no one else has turned up, I might not pick up on some things. Bouncing ideas back and forward off someone 
someone who knows English football, someone who knows this club, someone who knows you, someone who can maybe like, Steve having been above Ten Hag at one point, might give him the confidence and authority to go, you fucked up there. Yeah, because the... Um, and you need that. I know what you mean. The the easy counterpoint to that is, well, look what's happened already. Van Gaal got gigs in. Oli had Carrick. Fletcher's part of the staff now. You could go, that hasn't worked. But the difference is, McLaren is experienced. And he's... It's Ten Hag led. I, from the outside looking in, this looks like it's Ten Hag led and that might yeah. be the difference. Do you think that Van Gaal was like, let me get gigs in? Uh, well, he did say, I like to keep what... I remember him saying in a press conference, I do like to keep one of the coaches from the last regime. Okay. So okay. maybe it was, but again, I'm sure there would have been some like crowd-pleasing and choosing gigs. Do you know what I mean? He could have, he could have chosen... <laughs> to be fair, he's not going to choose Steve Round, is he? <laughs> oh, Lou Macari, what was he called? Who? The one who looked like Lou Macari. I can't remember his fucking know. name now. The Everton um, boys. Yeah, like, okay, yeah. And for all of the, the old boys club, a lot of people are throwing the uh, Liverpool boot room thing at United, saying, you know, are you aware of what that was? I've heard of it, but no. Tell me what the Liverpool So Liverpool boot room, room is just a, uh, like a, an, another name for their dressing room, essentially. And I, I, I imagine that boot room must have been like a, probably a storeroom off the side of the dressing room. And I imagine that was where coaches sat and had a bit of a natter and stuff like that. And the the Liverpool boot room, like I think, was it? Sh was it did it go Fagan and Shankly? Um, yeah, and then Paisley. Oh, Paisley. No, Paisley, Paisley was Shankly. after Shankly. Paisley was Shankly's number two, and then he took over. Wasn't he a physio? I think so, or a coach or something. Yes, and this is the point. It's like he went on to be this amazing manager. Yeah. Sadly. Um, <laughs> But like you imagine, the the Liverpool only had internal appointments was was the boot room thing, and it was like they just constantly promoted from within. But it worked. Yeah, it worked when it worked, and when it didn't work, it didn't work, and everyone pointed to that being a problem. But it, actually, this worked at one point. So well, maybe it's just the wrong person rather than the system is being wrong. You know, then they they, you know, they put Sunes in, they put Dalglish in, and and this is where it unravelled. But did it unravel because of them, or did it unravel because your recruitment was shit at the time? Mm. Um, maybe you need a no fresh. One. Maybe you need a fresh start though, because obviously they've succeeded now under Klopp. But it's completely fresh, isn't it? All of Klopp, Klopp's players. Um, yeah, I don't think any, I don't think he has any staff that are ex Liverpool players. No, it's just new that I'm aware of. Maybe United need that. But, but so Alex Ferguson, who was Brian Kidd? Yeah. Oh, you mean the, the European Cup winner from 1968? That guy. That's a job for the boys. On the face of things, yeah. um, Nobby Styles was. One of the sort of very undertold stories of the class of 92, you've heard of Eric Harrison. You know Eric Harrison was the manager. Nobby Styles was number two. Yeah, I, I didn't know that until recently. I didn't know that until but, recently. But yeah, it's like... This is our culture. This is our heritage. This is our... This is United's boot room. And if you say, Fergie transformed this, that and the other, he did. But he kept some roots to Manchester. You mm -hmm. know, I mean, he doesn't get much more roots to Manchester than the two Collierst lads, does it? <laughs> Jesus. And I think, obviously, Steve McLaren is not Mancunian, and I don't think it really matters. You know, Bobby Charlton wasn't Mancunian. It doesn't matter where you're... If you're, if you're United Heritage, exactly. you're United Heritage. And I don't know who's going to be kept around. You know, Mike Phelan's involvement in or not in training is a mute point. He was there from 99 to 2013 and left when Rene and the rest of them left. Him being a part of... Um, a failed Ole Gunnar Solskjaer regime um, and, a, and, and a failed Ralph Ragnick regime is is irrelevant, I, I think. Know. Well, man, like uh, Van der Gack, he's failed a few times in his career. I think he was a, um, I think he was in Portugal and he just had like a shocking start to a season, like as a manager. So it shows that, you know, it's not uh, not everyone's perfect, you know. No, and, you, know, and like you, you look at people like Pep Guardiola, who has gone Barcelona B, sh like shines. Barcelona shines. Bayern shines. City shines. Like not everyone's like that. Same well, with Klopp. I mean, no one's like that. No one's like that. I mean, even Klopp had Ferguson some absolute stinkers with Mainz. Is it St. Mirren where he got sacked? Ferguson? Um, it was that one. was more of a personality thing, I think, than performance. Oh, was it? Yeah. I just know that there was, there was one job where he got sacked. St. Mirren? I think it was St. Mirren. It was the first one he had, wasn't it? Uh... 
he was relatively successful at the ones after that. And then Aberdeen, obviously, was incredibly successful. Um, still the only manager that didn't manage Rangers or Celtic to, um, to have the, the, the last manager that wasn't a Rangers or Celtic manager to win. Was the league? Just the he last. was the last one. He's the last one. That's phenomenal. Like, that is such a big achievement. In 40, is it 40 break, years ago this to year? To break that duality, duopoly, whatever. Wow. Ages ago. Amazing <laughs> achievement. Have you, well, seen, have you seen? It's Real Madrid in a Cup Winners' Cup. That that film, the Ferguson film that came out on, uh, was it Prime? Was so, one that his brother did. Yeah, amazing. Like the, the, there's footage of the Aberdeen team training on the beach. Like he was just like lads were going to the beach. They didn't have a training ground. They won the Cup Winners' Cup and they did not have a training ground. Yeah, and they trained, they trained in on the, the beach park. in Aberdeen. Well, they trained in the local park, didn't they? Yeah. And uh, is it uh, God <laughs> Strachan talking about how like? Uh, there was a cemetery up the road, so cars would come past, and he goes, "You just have to like stop training." Well, like funeral processions went through. It's imagine, such a different time. Can you imagine Ronaldo just training on like Blackpool Beach? Blackpool Beach. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! When when Garnacho did that in the ground the other day, unbelievable. I was thinking, imagine oh. being him. There's sixty-seven thousand people going. Sue. Imagine being him and the last two <laughs> months of his career, like he's just been called up to to the national team with Messi. He's just um, been given the match ball from Cristiano Ronaldo. He's just pissed off all of Argentina <laughs> with, um, with... Calling his, Ronaldo the GOAT. Yeah, by calling Ronaldo the GOAT. Honestly, I don't think that. Argentina's been this upset since the Falklands. <laughs> like, um, he literally couldn't have gone any more turbo the way he went with them. And, and this is the balls of the guy. He's had the backlash. He's had Sergio Aguero in his comments. Oh, that was ridiculous. Yeah. It's, it's irresponsible as well, I think. But yeah. it's had, he's had all of this. What does he do? The night he scores two goals. I think it was, was it after the penalty he did it? Or was it after uh, the yeah, it was the penalty. It was, the penalty. was it not the winner? No, the winner, he took his top off. Oh, yeah, he did. Little yeah. knee um, So, yeah, he scores a penalty. He scores in a final. And what does he do? He chooses. This is deliberate. He chooses to do Ronaldo's celebration. <laughs> this is a young man that does not give a flying fuck. I know. I fucking love it. In that game... There were so many times when he could have passed, he didn't, he shot and missed. And I just thought... It's Ronaldo. Yeah, but it was mad because like his teammates, I think McNeil was annoyed once, but his teammates weren't even annoyed. They weren't even throwing their hands up in the air. They were almost just like, oh yeah, that's what he does. And then <laughs> when he scored the last goal, cuts inside, there's a man free. I was like, surely he passes this time. Doesn't, just shoots and scores. I love that. I love that because if you want to get to the top, you've got to have that about you. You've got to have that single mindedness. You've and got to have it. I said in the review of the game, United knew it was the threat, but Forest knew it was the threat. And Forest were well worth being in the final uh, and well worth you know, it being a tight game in the final. Yeah, they had a few good players. They did. I think they, it's hard to describe what I'm trying to say. They, he was the threat, but, but they was dealing with it. And then it was almost like his quality just broke them down and you know, he got that opportunity in the last minute. And they, like you said, there was only one outcome of what he was going to do. Uh, and I so wanted him to score from that moment because he'd had a good game and he, you know, he was being very positive. You know, he would give it and then burst into space. And I, I love that explosion. I hate it when people just meander off losing the ball. He was making himself really difficult to pick up. And you thought there was a bit of magic in him. Like You yeah, thought yeah. there was something coming from him. He's got to play next week because for everything our academy represents, he's just got player of the year. He's just got international call-up. He's just scored two in the final. He's the leading scorer in the FA Youth Cup. You're talking about giving him a new contract. Get him the start. The season's dead. Just start him. That's what everyone wants. And he, like the, you can see the single-minded. There's a... There's like a twinkle in his eye at the moment. He's going to do a match. You give him 90 minutes and watch what happens. I know. And you also mitigate the booing that you're probably going to get at the end of the game yeah. by playing him. Yeah, that's true. That's clever. But it's like, do we still technically have something to play for? I mean, I, I, we might not yet because of um, other teams of games. But like, what I mean is the whole conference Europa. Who gives a fuck? But that's what I mean. <laughs> but like, the problem is the club, if they know that we have to win to get Europa yeah, but League, like, they, will, they, they won't what, play kids. Does Ralph give a fuck? If Ralph Ralph's picking a, a team and he's like, fucking Garnacho's playing. I don't know. I feel like he will because, I don't know, I just feel like that's, that's a tournament Ten Hag would prefer to be in next season. I know like, I, I'm of the opinion, just sack it all off. I'd rather just finish eighth and not have anything next season because fuck the Europa. The, the Europa is so shit until you get to the final. And even that's like, 
Last season, we get all the way to the final. Think about how shit it was. I was I was more gutted going out against Leipzig in the group than losing the final. I was. And the year before, we played the whole group stage, round of 32, uh, last 16, quarterfinal, semifinal, and we lose. And we lose. And it's like, what the fuck was the point in that? If you don't win it, there's no point. We only had another so 90 minutes to just do. sack it off. Sack it off. Finish eighth, but I don't think it's possible anymore. Speaking of sacks... Oh god, here we go. Hey, we got a new video for this. Oh, check, are you ready for, you're not even ready for this. We did a bang up job on this. Check this out. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Smoking things. Mmm, balls. Right, summer's here. The sun is shining. Shirts are off and your balls are smooth. And if they're not, they better be. That's it. Friends at Manscaped are here to make sure that your beach balls are as smooth as the Floridian sand. I don't like that. We're going to have to change that to something else. In the summer, you want to kill some cold beers and some barbecues. Not kill the vibe because you're going to have a big, absolute turbo bush sticking out of your swimming trunks. And that's why Manscaped has got a performance package 4.0 to keep the party in your pants looking crisp and fresh all summer long. Dive headfirst in a joint of the first 4 million men in the world that trust Manscaped and get ready for a hot guy summer. Uh, maybe, um, by going to manscaped.com forward slash XG20 and getting 20% off and free shipping. We will throw the link in the description below. Go check it out. Forward Pack has got everything that you need to keep your summer body looking fresh and hot. They've got a lawnmower 4.0 trimmer. They've got a weed whacker for your ear and your nose. Listen, there's no point having your balls looking absolutely sensational and absolute Colgate fresh, is there? If you've got a tree growing out of your ears. Sort it out. They've got a crop preserver, which is ball deodorant, and if you don't think you need it, you definitely do. You've got crop reviver, which is toner for your balls. We've also got performance box briefs, which I'm going to be honest with you, they are absolute top-tier gym briefs. And a travel bag, so you can hold it, and you can pretend you're doing a slow-motion walk off the coach as you walk into the gym or, or whatever floats your boat. But XG20 is the code. You get 20% off, and you get free shipping. What do you buy the man who's got everything? Ball trimmers. What was that? Ball trimmers. Yeah, it's I said, true. I said ball trimmers. Trim your balls. They are good boxes, to be fair. They're very good boxes. They are good boxes. Good, like, like, good, like doing a bit of running, don't want a bit of chafing. Manscaped boxes. Yeah. Loud and proud. What'd you make of uh, De Jong? I got a bit excited, and then I got a little bit unexcited, and then I got a bit excited again. I asked for questions on Twitter, and my phone's dead. Um, do you want to go to my tweet and yeah. see if we've got some replies? Yeah, I got a bit excited, and then I think there's something in it, me. I don't think there's nothing in it, especially when there's people are pulling dates There's something out. in it. Yeah, I definitely think we're going to be keeping an eye on this one all weekend. Uh, it's going to be done soon as well, apparently. Well, they said first if of it June, gets done. to be done yeah, by, exactly. it, which is not far away. United can't get things done that quickly. Right. All right, let's have a look then. So, um, Rana Beer says, uh, Burn Pansel, the Australian witch doctor. What now? Eh? Um, we're going to have to look into that. Pep Linders and the Asthmatic Infusions. We're going to have to look into that one. Um, Fuentes and Pep's Nandrolone. Um, Can you talk to me about this stuff? What? Inhalers and stuff. I hear it all the time with Pep players, um, Pep teams and clock teams. 12% I really get of the it. UK population, I think, or world population is asthmatic. 60-odd yeah. percent of the Liverpool team is. thing is, I'm asthmatic, right? If I need my inhaler, it helps. But like... If I don't need my inhaler, I don't see how it's going to help. Because the therapeutic use exemptions, the TUEs that you get for using your inhaler, um, like if you use, it's, it's albuterol, I think, is the, the big one. And there's another one, is that alaterol? I don't know. I have Something along those lines. Uh, the al- I think. albuterol, I think, is the, the sexy one. Um, and this is what everyone on Tour de France uses. Think about it, right? The people that use the most like cardio in the world, Tour de France, is like... I, I read a saying somewhere that might have been even a Lance Armstrong thing saying it's like it's dangerous to do Tour de France if you're not on drugs like it's that intense and that yeah. hard um, if you um, what's the word I'm looking for Don't. if well if you are using albuterol or whatever it is whatever your inhaler is and you do a piss test it's going to show up on your piss test if you get a therapeutic use exemption, go, oh, I'm asthmatic. Mm. I can legally use that medication and then I don't get popped for, for using that medication. Now, how many little toots do you have when you feel a bit tight of breath? Two? Okay, they're doing 40. Mm. That's apparently the method uh, that <laughs> they do. That's ridiculous. 40. <laughs> like, um, like a fucking dog Do you ever see that big like, balloon thing that you got? Yeah, yeah. So there's like a big 
The so aero I've, chamber. Yeah, that's the thing. So I don't I don't know if this is what they do, but this is what I'm assuming they do because like 40 quick ones seems a bit mad, doesn't yeah, it? Just burn I'm your wondering, tongue. do they just go have that big balloon thing, just bosh 40 into it and go <laughs> and suck it in? <laughs> Can you imagine in the Liverpool dressing room? They're like, Klopp's doing his team talk. They're just like, all of them there. For like, science, <laughs> right? For science, if anyone can get older some for me <laughs> and, and we'll do it in the Seychelles, I don't know, where can we do it? Somalia, right? Somewhere what? lawless. I'll, I'll test it and see what it does. What? Did you... I'll test I'll boot roll, see if it works. Can you not just do it here? Fuck it, we'll go Seychelles and do it. Get a trip out of it. It's brand new, isn't it? Am I missing out something? Yeah, big time. Um, who's the best Baldy in the Prem next season? Um, fucking not Mike Dean. It's got, it's got to be our bench. Because even Steve's a bit short, isn't he? Got oh. Tough going out the front. But He's got a hair island. I mean, Van der Gaag needs to get a wig, doesn't he? Because uh, yeah, from where I sit in the Stretford end, I am not telling them yeah. two apart. <laughs> or he has to wear like a hat. What's or he doing? Wrong one. No, we'll have his initials here. Um, please compare the life of Sea World legend Tillicum and the significance of his ma many offspring across the world, and football legend Johan Cruyff and the significance of his managerial offspring. This is important work. Do not show your workings. Hey, I what? want to do that. What? What's, who's the Sea World guy? Tillicum. Who's that? It's a fucking orca. What's that? What do you mean, what's that? An orca? Yeah. What's that? A killer whale. Oh, what's that got to be? Do you know killer whales are actually not called killer whales? What are they called? Do you know when, like, um, humans are homo sapiens? Well, in Latin, they flip the, the front and rear word around. Killer whales are actually called whale killers. Shit, so they might not be whales. Well, I think they are, aren't they? They're yeah. mammals. But do, they, do they kill whales? Yeah, and sharks. Fuck me. But they're massive, aren't they? They hunt so. sharks, turn sharks upside down and then get their kids to fuck about with them. Because who knew that you just had to turn a shark upside down and it's like re resets it. Fucking hell. Just like, yeah, stay still. Pretty brutal, that. Um, what, what, what was the croy? Huggy Petter says, apart from visiting an aquarium, what other... So if we're going to have to book him in for this. Yeah, there's been too much talk about this. You need to actually do it. I we think. actually definitely just do it. Do it next that. week, we really week need after. To do it. When it's, we get a bit of a chill week. The next time they cancel London on us... We'll book it and we'll go to an aquarium. <laughs> we'll do a team one. Can I we'll have to take Blake so Ronaldo's got someone on his intellectual level. Yeah. Um, <laughs> why don't United scout using data analysis? Don't know. Um, I'm sure they do. They just do it really fucking badly. If testicles were shaped like cubes instead of balls, what would we call them? Like what? P cubes? Oh. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Would we call them nuts? <sighs> I don't know. But what, what, what is testicle specific to do with spheres? No, I don't think so. I don't know. They'd sit nicely together if they were both cubes. Push them together. Huggy Bear says, can Steve Bench press Ronaldo? I'm My PB would be Ronaldo in each hand. Um, so yeah, I can comfortably bench press. I mean, even right now, miles away from my PB, I could easily bench press Ronaldo. Can Ronaldo bench press me? I don't think he's even close. <laughs> Um, Elon Musk buying Twitter but not United I mean why is Elon Musk going to buy United he's just some space guy um, what affects form this is interesting um, from Victoria Linda Love it says what affects form fitness I think fitness leads to, fitness is everything um, I think fitness is like at, to a certain level if you're the fittest player on the pitch, you'll be the best player on the pitch. I mean, if you're lacking form... Not true. Wait, what? If you're... If you're the fittest player on the pitch, you'll be the best player on the pitch. Not true. To a certain level, I think. No, I think... I don't think being the fittest guarantees you're the, the best player on the pitch. Like, um, as an example, um, Steven Ireland, do the next City player? Yeah, yeah. Apparently he's fat as fuck at the minute. Mm -hmm. um, and he's playing with Hamza, who plays with us, and Hamza was saying, like, he's put some right size on. He goes but he didn't move, and he was fucking unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, like, Saturday league, though. <laughs> um, yeah, but this is Saturday league. He's essentially playing seven yeah, sides. Yeah, like, shit Saturday So league. fitness, confidence, team chemistry, home life, what's the most important? So what are they again? For form. Oh, all for form. Yeah, what affects form the most? So go through fitness. them again. I don't think fitness can. Or I, I think it can. I don't think it's the most important. Thing is, I'd argue... Confidence, team chemistry... 
No, Com- because you can com- have players. I confidence, think confidence is the hundred yeah. percent. If you, it's home like life. home life will feed into confidence. It will. Like if you, if your home life's rocky, y- your form's going to be down. But so is your fitness. If you're un- like you said, if you, if you're a great player but you're unfit, that's going to definitely affect your ability. You can be in form and not fit though. Uh, you can be. Are you going to be in form and not confident? I don't think that that computes. In form, but not. You confident. can be in form and not fully fit. That can work. Yeah, but I think I think confidence. I don't think you're informed well. and not confident. I don't think that's a thing. Because that's that's what changes things. Because they always say, don't they? If you're out of form, do the basics good, and that's what gives you more confidence, doesn't it? Because over time, if you're just like you, you're playing passes and they're all coming off, that's when you start to bite yourself more. <laughs> Phil Jones versus Stam in their prime. Who you got? I've got fucking Stam today. Yeah, I mean, you see what he did in that Legends game recently? No. Yeah, fucking yap Stam all day. Who, Phil Jones? There's, there's actually three people have messaged us saying there's a new black hole in the center of our galaxy. I don't even know what our galaxy is. Yeah, I don't even... Well, like, I can't mean? comprehend our galaxy. Oh. Like, have you seen some of the pictures from space? We definitely need an off-topic fucking football podcast. Some of the pictures <laughs> in space, right? Think about you've got 360 degrees of everything. And it's 360 degrees by 360 degrees, by the way. Every bit of the sky, you can take like a one centimeter look at the sky like that, and there are like a hundred thousand stars in there. And that means in this one centimeter, that's probably not even 0.1% of 0.1% of one degree. There is a hundred thousand stars, which means there's a hundred thousand suns mm-hmm. with fucking infinite number of planets no, no. orbiting them. It's like, you know, are those... we the only ones with life on? No, we're not. Maybe. Have you seen um, those YouTube videos where it, just, it, slowly, it slowly zooms out and then it zooms out and it zooms out and it zooms out and you just realise how small we are? It is fucked. But then it's like, what, what's mad is like, there's so many things on this world that are so much smaller than us. So then they look even smaller to that big, massive picture. Infinite and fractal. Yeah, it's mad. It is mad. Have you heard of the, um, there's like a, what's it called? A paradox where like, if you want to get between one point and another point, so say I want to get to that chair there, you can't see it, there's always a halfway point, right? So when I get to the halfway point, there'll be another halfway point. And then when I get to that halfway point, there'll be another halfway point. So in theory, I should never reach that chair because between every point, there's always another halfway. But then it's not true because I can just go stand on the chair. Do you know what I mean? Don't do drugs. Um, <laughs> do I? Do I? Did you see uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson talking about time travel? Uh, was it on a Joe Rogan podcast? No, it was his own thing, I think. Um, I do like and he basically thing. said, do you understand the theory of revit- relativity? Um, you just remind it. Well, Einstein, <laughs> Einstein's Because I'll, I'll be honest, I don't. I don't have a fucking clue what it's on about. Yes, it's Einstein's thing of which um, Interstellar does a really good job of confusing me with, right? Right. Uh, I get it, but I haven't got a fucking clue about it. Like, I get it, but I understand what's going on, but I also don't understand what's going on either. It's fucking bananas. Right. So, theory of relativity is like, then they go on some planets and you get that big fucking ticket, and basically what's happening is the ship orbiting is going around at one speed. These fuckers have, have spent like a minute on it. That guy's just got to 100 years old and everyone back home's dead. Like, that sort of shit going on. Well, Neil deGrasse Tyson did a thing yesterday, which I saw, which he basically explains not only how that works, but how that would be possible at the right speed. Like, if we can build um, a rocket of some sort and we can go at the right speed, we can go bosh like that and come back again. If, as long as we do, as there's, there's a, there is a speed that you can hit where this would be possible, where you would age one year going that way and coming back. And Earth could have done 10 or 100 years since. And that's so that he goes, it's theoretically provably possible to try and travel into the future, not the past, but you can essentially leap forward into the future. Would you want to? Oh, I don't really get what you're on about, to be honest, Steve. <laughs> You fucking go so fast in your ship that your bar- body ages. No, that no. you age in the time you're going that way because of the fucking theory of relativity and all that shit that they did in Estella. Listen, I talk shit about football. Mm-hmm. I'm not the guy to explain this to you. Neil deGrasse Tyson's that guy. Go watch his thing. But I'm going to try and explain it to you. Then I'm going to ask you a question. So, in the time you go at a certain speed, if you hit this speed, you travel in for one year, you go and come back. Mm-hmm. 
in the time it takes you, because of what you're doing, you will experience one year, but Earth will have experienced 10 or 100 years. Is that because of the speed? Yes. Okay, I get it a little bit more, but still. Don't and the, fully the distances are, are involved in there. So nah, but time's ridiculous, though. So you it? could theorize. So, okay, you don't need to know the mechanics of it because I can't explain them. So you don't need to know. Mm -hmm. But if I give you the choice and say, Dre, we're going to do this thing. You're going to jib off into the future and you're going to come back in a hundred years. Are you doing it, yes or no? No. Funny. No, because fucking, you just, like, linked to what we were saying earlier, technology now develops quicker than ever has ever. Oh, it's, it's that, exponential, yeah. That, well, this is the thing, like, I, I, I was having this conversation with one of my mates the other day. I was saying, like, when I was a kid, right, there were things that if people said to me, oh, this is going to happen in the future, I'd be like, nah, that's impossible. So, I mean, an example would be, like, answer to every question you'd, be able world, to, right? you'd be able to watch, like, TV through your glasses or you'd be able to watch stuff in your head but now like so back then i'd be like that that would never happen but now i don't think there's anything that you could say to me this is going to happen in 20 years 50 years that i'd say that's no, not impossible you're and not that is impossible again. i genuinely think so. put in yeah i'm gonna win in trouble again oh god I fucking hope so <laughs> uh but you no i wouldn't do it. do it i'd do it you'd do it yeah. what if you get back and there's just fucking radiation all over the gaff Fucking well, just well, cockro forever. cockroaches everywhere. You've got to assume what, the speed I'm going to be driving at. Uh, it's obviously going to be driving. <laughs> the speed I'm driving at, you've got to also assume it's going to be rapid, right? It ain't going to be 38 mile an hour. Yeah, you can it's, see. it's going to be X number of thousand mile an hour to do this. You've got to hope you don't hit a rock. <laughs> now, space is a big gaff, right? <laughs> Who's going to clear You can't have space. a fender bender. <laughs> Uh, three quarters of the way into fucking your trip and just go bink off a rock. You <laughs> fucked it. You're gonna explode. You so you got to exp you got one. You got to make sure you live it. And I don't know if you're gonna survive it. Make sure you got a seatbelt. Look, on. we're here for a fucking good time, not a long time. Yeah. Fucking sign me up. I'm going. You can see what they decided to do with Old Trafford, rebuild it, or uh, just. I come back. It, it, it's been painted. <laughs> yeah. Are you you fuckers <laughs> did nothing since I left? They just moved the disabled fans. How many again. titles are we on? <laughs> Twenty two. Fuck off. <laughs> Oh, that's so true. Just repainted it again. Oh my god. That'd be um, shit, wouldn't it? Anyway, um, let me know in the comments. Would you go? You could all do a year and come back in a hundred years. I'm saying no. You would have, Steve's you'd saying be yes. Fucked. Like email would not be a thing anymore. <laughs> yeah. Like everything that you knew is just fucked in it. it if you brought literally. someone from 1922, at, they're, they're 26 or something, like 30 in 1922, and you go fucking bosh, have some of that in 2022. And they're like, I used to ride a horse. Yeah, I know. Well, do you know what it is as well? It's like, I was on the tram earlier. I was just looking around. Obviously, everyone was just looking down at their phones. That would fuck someone up from no, ages I don't think ago. So. I don't think so. I think it would. Have you seen the photographs of people just reading the paper on the trains? Every fucker just edit yeah, the paper. Yeah, but like... Same shit. But they'll be like, what is that thing that they're holding? Fucking hell. Yeah, You'd but they get that pretty quick. But that, that was like the living Toddlers being. get iPads and stuff like that. Yeah, but it's just because what they've grown up with. Yeah, I think you give someone an iPad. iPad especially. You give someone an iPad and within an hour they go, I get this. Yeah, fucking. You know when a kid's like, can I play on your phone? Yeah, fuck off. Right. Go check out Manscaped and sort your balls out for summer. XG20 is the code you need for 20% off and free shipping. Uh, cheers to Dre. Cheers to you lot. Make sure to subscribe. A uh, couple more videos coming out tomorrow. So go and check those. Enjoy the rest of your weekend and I'll see you in a bit. See you later. Hey, thank you for watching the video. If you are new around these parts, then don't forget to subscribe. My channel is proudly supported by my community on Patreon. If you'd like to get a little bit of extra content, a Discord group, meetups, five-a-side games, weekly podcasts, behind the scenes, and even an occasional bit of transfer news as and when I get it, then for the price of a pint, you can show your appreciation for the content that we make and get some goodies for doing so as well. Check the link in the description or click the button right here. You'll also find all of my socials here too if you want to follow me on any of those platforms. Nice one.